This is Darla Campbell, Campion College former head girl and a top student in Cape Biology Unit 1 and Unit 2. She joins me today to provide tips for those of you sitting these exams this year. So whether you're doing Cape Unit 1 or 2 Biology, keep watching to guarantee your success. Did you, wait, did you expect to achieve what you did? Expect probably isn't the verb that I'd use. Hope for, work for it. No, that would be different. So I'd say yes, I hoped for it. Yes, I worked for it. But expected it, I, no, I don't think so. I tried my best to achieve it. So I'm glad I did, but expect, no. And what was your reaction when you found out? Well, <laughs> when I found out, I must say I was excited. And the first thing I can remember doing was texting my best friend, who currently is at the University of Toledo, because if you look at the merit list, you'll see that I came third regionally. And then my best friend, whose name is Carissa Richards, she came fourth regionally. So basically, we played right after the other. And so, you know, it was just a good experience to share with her, knowing that we did so much work together, so much studying together. So it's good that both of us could end up on the list. And of course, in addition to that, I must say I was relieved and proud because I really wanted to place in biology in CSEC and that didn't happen. And it was particularly because of a teacher that I had in fifth form and fourth form that encouraged me beyond the limits that I thought I could exceed. And so I wanted to place for her in CSEC. I didn't. So it was good that I was able to finally get there after working so hard. So yeah, short story, excitement, relief, and pride. So describe the timeline of preparation for these exams. All right, so um, having done CSEC, you already know that for science students, your SBAs or your labs, they contribute a percentage towards your final grade. So for me, preparing for the exam really started with doing the labs to the best of my ability. Because, you know, once you get to a point where you maximize the score on the labs, then that puts you in a better position to excel or to place, right? So it really started out with the labs, trying to maximize my score. Then of course, after labs, the next thing for me would be note-taking. So I try my best to pay as much attention as possible during class time to catch all the explanations, the jargons, the diagrams, because I find that for me, if I have the most detailed notes that I can have when it comes closer to the time, so maybe a month before the exam, it's easier for me to develop a study sheet or a formula sheet based on the detailed notes that I would have had. So if we're going in chronological order, labs first, note taking in class then about a month out before the official start of the exams i'd start preparing my study sheets my formula sheets so these would have just the raw information maybe the diagrams with labels then after that closer to the time i put my notebooks aside put my study sheet aside and then focus solely on doing past papers. So maybe like a week before the exam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that encompasses my timeline. So did you also go to extras as well? Because I know a lot of persons do that. My sixth form biology teacher, uh, closer to the exam, about six weeks before, she starts to have something that she calls Saturday sessions. So it's not really an extra class, but she makes available her textbooks and any other type of resources that she may have. And then you're free to go on a Saturday, seek out her help with a question, borrow her textbooks. So 
that would probably be the only extra kind of help that I got for the exam. So did you have the same study technique for internal exams and tests? Yeah, pretty much. I think the only thing that differed in how I would study for the exam versus regular test is probably the timeline. I definitely <laughs> didn't, you know, study from way like a week before, maybe a few days before. And is there anything else that was different? Well, of course, I didn't make any study sheets for regular tests. I just used my notebook, which is why I thought it was very important to make it as detailed as possible because then I could pick and choose, you know, what to study versus what not to study. And if that makes sense. Yeah. So how did you stay motivated throughout all of this? <laughs> Boy, <laughs> honestly, that's a tough question to be honest. <laughs> Because um, most of 6A, upper 6, was online. So staying motivated, I'm not going to lie. I really have to, I have to credit that to not only my family, my mom, my sister, my father, as well as my sixth form biology teacher. Because there was a point in time where the entire year group were just tired the school year felt like it was never ending and we all felt like giving up. But she she implemented something on Fridays called Fitness Fridays, where she would start a Zoom meeting and anyone could join. And we'd do Friday exercise. She'd ask us, you know, how we're finding classes, you know, if we need any help with anything, if we need to vent about anything. So I feel like that really helped in terms of motivation. And then because I always knew what I wanted to do and that I needed a career in science or wanted a career in science, that kind of gave me an innate motivation because I knew, you know, I have to do well in this in order to proceed to my next step. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. So really, mostly, most of my motivation came from my six form biology teacher at that time. Yeah. So what are some challenges that you faced while preparing for these exams and how did you overcome them? Staying motivated was probably one of my biggest challenges, as well as I know that I'm a people person. And even though I do a lot of individual studying, study group sessions with my friends in person was also a part of my usual study ritual. So being online for most of upper six form kind of threw me off especially at first because it was hard for me to you know want to get up out of bed do the whole routine bathe put on clothes to come to class and you know at first I ended up taking a lot of pictures knowing that I'd never read them again and yeah remember I said I would make formula sheets and study sheets it was hard for me to want to start that process as well so weeks would pass and I'm like, you know, I should have done this. I set deadlines for myself. And I don't follow through because it just feels like the school year is going on forever and ever. And exams are just so far away yet so close. In terms of how I overcame those challenges, of course, I have to credit my sixth form biology teacher. She had like just this sense of when certain students were slipping and she would always be right there with an email to say hey you need to you need to talk about it have you started studying okay. do you need any suggestions on what you can do to help you and I feel like that helped with the motivation in terms of just wanting to start studying and then my friends also developed like a Friday Zoom session where we'd go over questions and concepts so that helped to keep me motivated as well. And honestly, one time I just had to sit down with myself and be honest and say, it's about three weeks of the exam. You have not started seriously studying. You need to start now. So I turned off all my devices, got out a sheet of paper, got out some pencils, some highlighters, got my notebooks, my textbooks, and just started making the sheets. Because usually, I do it a month before. Now we only have three weeks and it's like, you know, gotta get moving. 
But yeah. So how do you balance school, um, co-curricular activities, and a social life? I was dreading this question, I'm not going to lie. Um, okay, balancing school and a social life for me was easier when I was in high school because to be honest, school, the academic part of it, as well as the social part of it, kind of all came together in one atmosphere. All my mm-hmm. friends did the same subject as I did. So it was easier for us to make plans knowing that we had a particular assignment due this time or we had a particular class or project. And I mean, I was the head girl in my year and I was also a senior prefect. Mm-hmm. And coincidentally, all my friends were senior prefects or prefects. So I mean, extracurricular, social, academic, all kind of fell into place. So mm-hmm. it didn't really require me per se to go out any extra time to balance because we all understood that we have this and this and this to do. And because we all did similar things, it was easier for us to just plan around it because we would all have the same free time, all have the same study time, school time. I think you mentioned it previously, but I'm going to ask again, why did you choose to study sciences? This was probably most influenced by my mother. She's a registered nurse and she works at the Bustamante Hospital for Children. And when I was smaller, like, you know, an infant, she was working in the intensive care unit and my father traveled a lot for work. So there would be times when she'd have to carry me to work with her and just you know, being so young and impressionable, <laughs> I hope that doesn't sound cliche. I just kind of got fascinated with the work that I could see her doing from my little corner. And from that, it's just been an intense fascination that has carried me from infant school, prep school, high school, straight to university. And then on top of that, my maternal grandmother, who I was closer to, and my father's side, of course, uh, she developed like a rare form of bowel cancer, and she had to got she had to get the majority of her treatments abroad. In at the time, I was in grade four, so it didn't really register to me that you know, hey, this is something really serious, and you may see her off to go abroad, but you may not see her again. So when the news came that she finally passed, I think it came as a shock to me and it didn't really register until the funeral. And I think that kind of helped to intensify my need to do medicine because Mm -hmm. I couldn't really understand why she couldn't get treatment here because she's closer to her family here and it would have been good to, you know, see her doing her treatments in person, be able to talk to her, be able to talk to the doctors in person about what was happening to her and I feel like being robbed of that experience kind of just pushed me to continue on that path. This is the last question. What is one piece of advice you would give to a student sitting CXC exams this year? Can I give you two like you can. All right. So the first one, definitely do not follow the crowd. When it Mm -hmm. comes down to exam season, there's always a group of people that are going to tell you, why I'm never studying and I haven't started, I'm going to fail, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it's easy for you as someone being friends with this person to say, well, if this person is here, then, you know, maybe there's hope for me. I can get, I can get somewhere along on the path of studying, whatever. And it's always comes out that that person that was egging you on and allowing you to follow in their path of just being a delinquent Mm. they went home every night you know they studied and you feeling comfortable in following their crowd and oh she hasn't started yet so it's fine if I haven't started the outcomes are always different you know what I mean so you should know how well you retain information you should know by now how much time it takes for you to retain this information and make a plan, right? You are doing the exam for yourself, not your friends, not your parents, not your teachers. 
So you need to take responsibility. You need to devise your own plan, your own strategies and drown out the noise. So that would be my advice, piece of advice, number one. Number two, do not wait until it is too late. Start as early as possible. They have a thing about when, you know, when the poetry starts shedding, if you haven't started studying, you're going to fail. You need to start studying before that, right? Because the more time that you give yourself to retain the information, to interact with the material, to test yourself, is the more successful you're likely to be. Leave it down to a few weeks. You're pushing yourself to cram a bunch of information that you probably don't remember because you've done this stuff from like September in the previous year, right? So yeah, those are my two pieces of advice. Don't follow the crowd, be your own thing, and do not waste time. Thank you, Darla, for joining me, and thank you guys for watching. This video is the final in the trilogy created to help you excel in CXE this year. So check out the playlist to watch the two previous videos.